first thing we're going to do is create a disk and we're going to go into our object tab and we're going to increase the inner radius to about let's say 60 centimeters hold down control click and drag that up let's increase the scale and we can use this little circle here this orange circle to increase the inner radius of that even further and increase the outer radius now with your move tool selected hold down control click and drag that up so now we have three discs so i'm gonna bring down the inner radius to about here i'm eyeballing this now so you guys can mess it it doesn't really matter what your inner radius and outer radius are set to on each of these discs as long as they're different from each other select all your discs and hold down control let's drag all of these up so now we have six discs but we don't want them to be the same so i'm just gonna scale these guys up and i'm gonna start messing around with the inner radius and outer radius of each of them just randomizing them up cool now let's put all of these into a null so select them all hold down alt and hit G in your keyboard call these discs let's create a twist deformer and put it into our discs null now we want to click on fit to parent and we also want to increase the angle it's going to twist the deformer but it's not going to twist our discs because it's pointing in the wrong direction so we want to go into our coordinates tab and in our rotation in our pitch set that to 90 degrees and let's go back into our object tab and increase the scale of this to about 380. Hit NB in your keyboard so we can see our lines. It's looking pretty good. I want to grab disk 4. Just going to move it down along the Y so it's more evenly spaced. I'm going to grab disk 5 and move it up along the Y. So that's looking a bit better. Select all of your disks and let's increase the rotation segments so that, that smooths out everything. I'm going to go for 225 on that. So that's looking pretty good. Everything's looking nice and smooth. Okay, so next we want to create a spherify deformer and we're going to add it as a uh, into our disks null okay so now that that's all done and dusted we want to create our center sphere so let's go ahead and do that right now rename it to center sphere and we want to make sure that our Discs are centered to our world. So middle mouse click, go into your front view. And with the discs null selected and the move tool selected, let's just bring that down to center up with our world. Like that. Back into perspective. And you can see that our sphere might need to be reduced in scale just a little bit so we'll bring it down to not nine but 90 centimeters so that it's not touching any other parts of our geometry so we'll go back to we'll actually go down to 280 centimeters on that and now we can create our materials so i want to hide off our spherify deformer and our twist deformer. So I'm just double clicking on the visibility tags here, the top ones, to make those red so that'll hide those away. I'm also going to turn off my grid. And let's see, we might increase the twist on this. 
to about to about there. And um, actually, I'm going back to about. Let's see. I'm going to leave it at 235 degrees. Let's create a new material and call it center and apply it to our center sphere. Now I want to create a displacement deformer for our center sphere. Make sure it's a child of the center sphere. Go into the shading tab and let's go to create a gradient shader. Pop into your gradient shader and let's start right clicking and double knotting. Right click double knots, right click double knots, right click double knots. That's really handy. So that's going to create some displacement but it's all weird and janky looking so what we can do is increase the segments of our sphere to Let's say 80. That'll smoothen everything out. We need to decrease the radius a little bit more on our center sphere. We go 70 on that. Yeah, okay. Cool. Now we're going to create a cloner object. We're going to create a sphere. And this sphere is going to be cloned by this cloner object. The radius is going to be brought down to 10 of this on the sphere. And we want the cloner object mode to be set to object. It's going to ask us for an object to clone the spheres along. So we're going to clone them along the center sphere here. Just drag that down. And let's bring the count up to about 200. Now, so they're all... First of all, they're all too big and they're all touching off each other. But what we can do is, with our cloner object selected, go to MoGraph, Effector, and select Push Apart. That'll create the Push Apart Effector. It's going to push them all apart. Not in the way we want, but we can go into the Effector and we can go to Mode and set that to Scale Apart. Now, we're going to get this kind of the push apart is going to do its best to make sure that the spheres don't touch each other if we increase the scale enough they will touch each other but we're not going to increase the scale that much we're going to increase the scale a little bit and we're going to increase the count to about 300 and then we're going to increase the scale even more so as you can see the push apart effector is doing its greatest job of making sure our spheres aren't actually touching off each other. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to start creating some materials for this. So I, I'm actually rotating around my scene a lot just trying to find a good angle for this. What I want to do is also bring back the inner radius of some of these discs it's making it difficult for me to see my center sphere and my center sphere needs to be seen you know it's just one of those kind of spheres needs to be seen that's a good angle I like that angle I'm gonna keep that angle I'm gonna select a camera create a camera make it active and I'm gonna go to cinema 40 tags and add a protection onto that Okay, I like that angle. Okay, so now we're going to create some materials for our discs and our clone spheres. So this is going to be called Mat, and it's going to be... We're going to go into our reflectance channel. We're going to bring down the width and bring up the specular strength. Go into color. And let's find a nice color for this. So I'm going to go with this kind of auburn-ish color. Apply that to disk 5. Hold down control and drag to duplicate that. I'm going to go for a kind of a bluish 
light teal, tealish color. And apply that to this four. And I'm going to hold down control and duplicate. And I'm going to go for some kind of a yellow, possibly. Hmm. Purple, maybe. And we'll apply that to disk three. NA in your keyboard. Mm, I just pressed the wrong button. I don't know what button I pressed, but it made my stuff act weird. Just press N, yeah, NA in your keyboard to hide your lines. Now I want to duplicate this purple, hold down control and drag it down to disk 2. Duplicate this teal, hold down control to disk 1. And this auburn is getting controlled and dragged down to disk. Disk. Not liking that teal or that purple actually. So let's uh, turn on our interactive render region. And let's just drag this out. Bring up the quality here to the max. Let's go back into our active, our camera that we s created. Hmm. Don't like the purple. Getting rid of the purple. The purple is gone. Going for maybe this yellow. Don't like the yellow. Maybe we go for red. But if we go for red then we won't be able to keep the orange or the auburn. So I'm going to go into the or the orange or the auburn. And you know what? I'm not actually digging this um, color combination at all, but I'm not going to mess around with it too much. You guys, you just find a nice color combo for yourselves because I'm just terrible right now at finding a good color combo. I'm under pressure, you know? Um, so we need to add some thickness to our disks. So what we can do is go to simulate cloth, cloth surface. Let's make our disks a child of that and let's increase the thickness there to four centimeters. And I just want to deactivate my camera. And you know what? I kind of like that angle better now. So I'm going to create another camera. Make it active. I'm going to drag this protection tag up. Holding down control so it's going to be duplicated. Okay, so now we're going to create some lighting. So I'm going to go into my top view. And this is my active camera. So I want to create the lighting that's going to complement this view. Create a light. And with your move tool selected, let's just drag that over there. We'll go into this light and set up the shadow to be area. And let's hold down control and just drag and to duplicate that light. So we're going to bring this over to about here. So I'm just trying to line it up with my line of sight of my camera and keep it symmetrical um, and this light is going to have no shadows and we're going to turn down the intensity to about 60. Let's go back into our perspective see what that looks like. It's not looking terrible it's not looking great either. Select both your lights go into your coordinates tab let's drag that up along the Y bit better, bit better. Um, let's go to our center material and add some reflectance. Add a Beckman and set the attenuation there to be additive. Okay. We need to get some color on our clone spheres. Well, yeah, so we have one kind of cloned sphere here, so I want two extra kinds. So I'm just duplicating those. So I have three kinds of clone spheres, and I'm going to drag the yellow onto the first one, the teal 
onto the second one and the red onto the third one. So now we get a bit of variation there. And what else do we want to do? Let's turn on global illumination to brighten up these darker areas. And let's see what that looks like. And I think that is going to be it. Yeah, that's it, guys. Um, is there anything else we can do before the end of this tutorial? I think, I think not. I think that's all you're going to get from me. You, we have a key light and a fill. I mean, you could go and set up a rim. So if I grab light one and if I just bring this back to about there and up a bit along the Y. And now you're going to get a bit of extra lighting. Just turn that off. I mean, turn it on again. You might argue that it looks better with or without it. But, um, oh yeah, anti-aliasing. Never forget anti-aliasing. Go into your render settings, which is here. Anti-aliasing, set it to best. Go 4x4, four four, why not? And also turn on uh, ambient occlusion. Turn off your interactive render region and just do a render of that. See what it looks like. It's going to look beautiful, I'm sure. And it does. Okay, so guys, that's it for this tutorial. Feel free to animate the shit out of this uh, because there's a lot of possibilities with the twist deformer. You can do some cool animations and the spherify deformer as well, actually. So I uh, hope you learned a lot and I'll see you in the next video.